the way I use a tiling window manager has drastically changed over the years. I went from i3 a manual tiler, to BSPWM a hybrid tiler, to Awesome WM a dynamic tiler, and now basically back on i3 using Sway over on Wayland. So I wanted to go over my current sort of workflow, sort of as a inspiration for any new tiler users. So I think the best place to start with this is with my monitor configuration, because in my regular videos, you only see this main monitor. But from my side, I actually have a triple monitor layout. And it's not your typical, you know, hey, I have three horizontal monitors. I totally get people wanting to do that, but I feel like that's not really the best use of your space. I actually have only one horizontal monitor. My other two displays are vertical displays. I have embraced the life of the vertical monitor chad, but obviously I still need a horizontal display and I would never want to fully do away with it. This is just objectively better for doing things like gaming and general computing tasks where maybe you want to have two windows open side by side, or how about I'm recording a video and want to actually, you know, have a 1920 by 1080 output. That's just not going to easily happen with a vertical display. And a vertical display is better for some other things like, say, reading a news article or Discord chat, my music library, stream chat, and things like this. Plus, I've got my desk pretty close to my wall, and this vertical display is a 27-inch display. I could technically, you know, make it fit, but having a vertical display there takes up way less desk space. As for my third display, its sole reason for existing is being a glorified teleprompter. So I have this very close to my camera, and I have my video notes, my stream topics, and things like this. If I wasn't making these videos, I would only be using two monitors. Now you may be wondering how well a Tyler works on a vertical display, and I guess the best way to describe it is most of the time, basically the same. So right now I'm using Sway over on Wayland and I'm still using Awesome on X. In Awesome, I'm using the master stack layout where I have my master node on the left and then my stack on the right. But this isn't going to work on a vertical display. Take what you see here and then squish it all together. That would be really annoying. But Awesome also supports other layouts. So what I'm using on that display is actually this layout, where we have the stack on the top and the master on the bottom. And to make sure this stays, you know, some level of usable, I limit the number of windows I'm allowed to have on one desktop. Unless I'm doing something for a video, I will never have more than three windows on each of my desktops. My theory is, hey, I have, what is this, nine desktops per display. I might as well go and use them. And I don't really keep that many windows open all the time anyway. So usually on most days, I'm at most using like three or possibly four desktops. Maybe more if I'm using some full screen windows, but if I just have windows like this, usually about three or four. And in some cases, that does mean I kinda lose track of windows, especially when it comes to browsers, for example, where I'm still going to make use of the browser tabs. So if I have like 10 tabs open in one place and 10 tabs open in another place, I may not remember exactly which browser I had things open in, but most of the time, it does the job. The one exception I'll make to the three window rule is a floating window, and most of the time, that ends up being a floating terminal. Not a floating terminal to do just, you know, general terminal things in, but this might be useful as well. What I usually do is have my Vim wiki open. Usually I have like a browser here and I'm taking some sort of notes or maybe I'll be testing an application and then I have this window here just jotting things down. And sometimes it'll be for applying or sending an email. Usually if I have a floating window open, it's not gonna be something I keep open for a very long time. I open it to do something quickly and then when I'm done with it, I'll go and close it. If it's something I'm gonna keep around for a long time, then I won't have it be a floating window. 
The reason I use a tiling window manager is I generally prefer my windows to be tiling. If I preferred floating windows, I would use a floating window manager like KWIN or LabWC over on the Wayland side. And if I preferred tabbing, I would go and use that or any of the other styles that exist. But a lot of the time, parts of this functionality will exist inside of your tiler. And if I find a use case where a floating window is just going to be better for something, I'm not going to shy away from using it. One of the main reasons why I primarily use a dynamic tiler now is I just don't really care about the extra control of a manual tiler. When you have three windows on a desktop, as long as they're not side by side or top to bottom, it really doesn't matter how they're tiled. This is fine, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine, and back to the start. That's one of the few things out of the box that I don't like about Sway. If you don't do anything, it's a manual tiler, so it's going to keep tiling in the exact same direction, so either left to right or top to bottom. But this can be addressed by using a very simple script. Something like auto tiling, which I believe I've done a video on, which basically will turn Sway or i3, they use the same API, into effectively a hybrid tiler. It doesn't get rid of that manual control if you want to be using it, but it will go and automatically tile things into a layout that's very similar to this. Honestly, the main reasons why I chose Sway is it's one-to-one -one compatible with i3, so I basically already knew how to configure it, and I had a config laying around already, and also, it's where the most developers over on a WL Roots compositor actually are. But I might be perfectly comfortable over on something like River as well. I've been meaning to try this out, I'll get to it at some point. Now let's talk about application launching and hotkeys. I tend to hotkey basically as much as I can get away with. To the point where sometimes I forget my hotkeys and I try to make sure they don't overlap with applications. I keep everything on my super key, so usually applications don't end up touching this. Obviously, I have my application launcher, both on X and Wayland, this is on Super D. But I don't just have the app launcher. A lot of applications I launch frequently, I have on their own dedicated hotkeys. For example, my audio mixer is on Super Alt P. I have my file manager on Super Alt F. I've got a dedicated email key on my keyboard. I've got a browser key on my keyboard. And basically, it just makes it much simpler rather than being like, oh, I want to go and open up my browser. Let's type in Brave. I want to open up my emails. Let's type in Thunderbird. And sure, I could absolutely do this, but it's way more key presses than I want to be doing. If I open it frequently, I might as well hotkey it. The app launcher basically exists for anything else on my system that I don't open up frequently. Let's say, I don't know, Steam, for example, and things like that. I go so far with my hotkeys that I even have my YouTube studio bound to a hotkey. And I have things like my bookmarks for my browser and things like this. It just makes it much more convenient to easily hop around my system. But one thing I don't bind, or at least I don't use if it is bound by default, is the window controls. So you probably noticed that whenever I had a floating window, I've been moving it around with my mouse. This isn't just for the sake of the video, this is the way that I normally do it. Plus, if I want to go and resize it, I'll use my mouse as well. But even if it's a tiling window, I don't usually change my focus using my keyboard. I have a binding for it, like I can do that. But since I usually have my hand on the mouse anyway, I might as well use the mouse. Plus for doing things like, say I have this window open here and I want to go and move it over here. Well, I can just drag it there or say resizing these windows. I very heavily use my mouse. And this might seem dumb with a terminal window, for example, but when I'm using a lot of GUI applications, I'm using the mouse anyway. On that note of keeping my workflow efficient, I also don't like setting things in my window manager config that will apply to many different window managers, things like general variables, general key bindings, and things like this. So over on X, there is an application called SXHKD. This is basically a generic way 
of setting your keybinds. It's not linked to any specific window manager. I can use this on i3. I can use this on Awesome, DWM, BSPWM, and anything else out there. So if something doesn't specifically relate to the window manager I'm using, let's say it's my... Uh, opening up an application or my audio controls or other things like this, it's going to go inside of this application. Because if it's inside of my window manager config, when I want to go over to something else, then I have to copy all of it out, change it into the new format, and then I've just duplicated work for the sake of duplicating work. And the same is true for my variables. If I can set something in my ZSH M4, something like that, that's what I'm going to do. The only things that exist inside of the window manager config are things specific to that window manager. So things like controlling windows in that specific environment. And I'm working on the same thing for Wayland as well. All of these variables are things that need to be set regardless of whether I'm using Sway, River, Wayfi, or anything else out there. Some of them may go and automatically set them for me, but I need them set anyway so they might as well just be in a launch script. Doing it this way, you could argue, is less efficient performance-wise, especially with something like SXHKD. But on the management side, it has saved me so much time. And the same thing when I cared about my status bar was also true. Nowadays, I use the awesome bar, and this is basically just the vanilla bar. But when I was using BSPWM, i3, and anything else I might try out in the future, I'm just going to use polybar. It doesn't matter if they have a built-in bar or a recommended bar. Polybar just makes it easier. And over on the Wayland side, right now I'm using Waybar and it works great. And it's one thing I need to manage rather than 10 different things. Speaking of my bar and theming, people occasionally ask me what theme I'm using. It's really simple and really clean. And yeah, that's what it is. It's really simple. I have a blue border when something is in focus, and a black border when it's not in focus. And then, like, I think a two or a three pixel gap, and then my bar is black with grey when something's in focus. I'm really not doing much with it. I tend to strip most of the stuff out and keep it as basic as possible. Not because I don't like an exciting looking theme you might see on certain subreddits, but when I have a theme that's this simple and I have an application that doesn't necessarily exactly fit that theme, it's gonna look mostly good enough as opposed to having a really fancy theme and then an application that looks nothing like it. It doesn't matter if it's GTK3, GTK4, QT5, QT6, some sort of electron web nonsense, as long as it has a dark theme, it tends to look good enough on my desktop. But my desktop consistency isn't something I really focus that much on is just something where, hey, it looks good enough and that's about as much as I care. So let me know how you use a Tyler. Is styling important to you? Do you not like to use your mouse? Do you use your mouse way more than I do? Do you limit the amount of hotkeys you have? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And... I'm out.